Hey everyone, welcome to Advent of Code 2023, Day 3. This puzzle is called Gear Ratios, it's about numbers in a grid, and I'm going to explain the problems and my solutions. As usual, my code is going to be in the description below, so be sure to check that out. There's a GitHub repository where I post all my code. There's not going to be a time lapse where I solve the puzzles today because I did them while not recording. I was at some event and could not record, but don't worry, I'll have the explanations as usual. So part one, we are given what is called an engine schematic, which has a bunch of numbers and some symbols. Our job is to figure out uh, the answer, which is the sum of all of the numbers that are adjacent to any symbol in the engine schematic. So in this example, we have a bunch of numbers, so like 467, 114, etc., etc., and we need to extract all the numbers that are adjacent to any character that is not a period or I guess another number. So for instance, 467 is a good number because it's next to this star. So you're allowed to be adjacent diagonally. It can be up, left, um, down or right or diagonally in any direction. So I guess there's sort of eight sides that are adjacent if you think about diagonals and immediately adjacent. If any of the spots next to a number contains a symbol, then the number is good to go. It's considered a part number and we need to add together all of the part numbers. So in this schematic, all of the numbers are part numbers because they're adjacent to a symbol. In this case, there's a bunch of pound signs, some asterisks, plus sign and a dollar sign, but two of them are not. So 114 is not a part number because in all of the surrounding squares or cells, there are no symbols, so periods don't count again. And 58 is not a part number because there are no symbols adjacent to it. We need to get, add together all of the other numbers and that's going to be our answer. So to do this, what I did was a little bit convoluted, but it worked. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to take our input and we're going to scan through every single line because numbers have to be contiguous within a line. We're going to extract all the numbers um, and for every number, as we loop through the line and extract them, we're going to look around all of the cells by it. If any of those cells contains a symbol, then we're just going to add it to our answer. So the question is, how do you do that? First, I defined a function that tells us whether a given square is a symbol. And we're going to allow searching outside the grid because sometimes we have off by ones. If you're at the edge of the grid, like you're looking at this number, let's say um, 801 over here, line 88 in my input, and you want to check all eight sides, right? Up, down, left, right, top, left, top, top right, bottom, left, bottom, right. And when we're searching to the left, we're not going to be able to look past the grid because we're going to index into like the negative one column, which doesn't actually exist. So when we're doing our checks, we want to make sure that it's within the grid. If it's not within the grid, then we can just say there's no symbol there if we're going to check for a symbol because it's outside the grid and there's no symbols there. So this function is basically just to avoid indexing issues when we're trying to detect whether there are symbols at a given spot in the grid because we're going to need to do that eventually. Essentially, you just check if um, the given row and the column are within the limits for the rows. So n is the number of rows. That's just how many lines are in the input. And then m is the number of columns. That's just the number of characters in the first line of input because all of the lines have the same number of characters. So we need to check if the specified cell is within the grid. If it's not, then there's no symbol there. Otherwise, we return if the given character is not a period and it's also not a digit. So Python has this really handy function called isDigit, which tells us whether a given character is a digit, so 0 through 9. Now we've written that function and we just need to iterate through all of the lines. And I'm going to use Python's enumerate function to iterate through all of the indices and all the lines simultaneously so that we get an index and a line in a really convenient format. Another way to do this would be for i in range n and then just do a line equals lines i, but this is just a really compact way of specifying the same thing using the enumerate method, which is really helpful. What we're going to do here is we're going to go through the entire line and we're going to pick out each of these numbers. For each of the numbers, we're going to check all the spots next to it, see if there's a symbol in there. If so, add it to the answer and then get to the next number. So within this line, we're going to initialize our variable J, which is going to keep track of our current column within the row. So J is going to go from zero to M minus one. And this while loop basically just tracks all of the numbers. So every iteration in this while loop is going to be a singular number. Within this for loop, we're going to start our current, uh, I guess, column at J. So this is going to be the start of a number. If we're not at a number, don't worry. We're just going to move to the next one. You'll see that 
um, when it happens. But assuming we're at the start of a number, we're going to iterate through the end of this number using that this for loop. So that's going to iterate the column variable j forward while it's not at the end of the line and while we're still at a digit. So this is going to capture the entire number up until the end, assuming that we're already at a number. If we're not at a number, for example, if you start at a period, then uh, this while loop is not going to execute at all because the line j is digit Sat uh, condition will not be satisfied, so we're just going to iterate to the next one over and keep going until we hit a digit. When we do hit a digit, this string num will have filled up to contain the entire number, and we can just turn it into an integer. And then we're going to look all around our number because we need to see if there's a symbol around our number to add it to the answer if it is a part number. I think that's what it's called, part number. Uh, let's see, yeah, part number. So. There are eight possible occasions, but what we're going to do is split it up into two groups. So let's look at this number 381. Uh, we're going to check all of the spaces that I'm marking with X's right here. Uh, remember that diagonals also counts. And this at symbol is also going to be checked as well, but I'm just gonna mark it with an X. We're going to consider these two end X's separately, and that's going to be this. So remember we had that function to check if a given coordinate is a symbol or not. We're gonna check the current row um, but the start of the number minus one, so this is the uh, character immediately left of our number. We're also going to check the character to the right, which is the current row I and column J, because at this point, J will have incremented past what is considered a digit. So we're going to look at what's to the right of our current number. If either the left or the right are a symbol, so not a period, not a digit, then we're good. Add our current number to the answer and then move to the right by one and then uh, keep chugging along. We want to increment by one because we want to make sure that we're just getting to the next number. This is not strictly necessary. So I just got rid of it right there and we're just going to keep chugging along looking for the next number. Um, the other case is again, going back to this 381, the five X's on top and the five X's on the bottom. So we've checked the left and the right, but we also need to check the top and the bottom. And how we're going to do that is we're going to iterate every column from J minus one. So J will correspond to this three and uh, sorry, start will correspond to the three and J will correspond to the X, so the column numbers of those two characters. We're just gonna iterate from start minus one up until J, and that's what this for loop is, start minus one to J plus one because ranges don't include the ending number. Gonna iterate through all those columns, check the top row, so the row before this one and the row after this one. If either of those are symbols, then we're good to go. If not, then move to the next column and keep going for this entire for loop. So in this way, we check the characters to the left of the current number, to the right of the current number, and all of the ones on top and on the bottom. If any of those are symbols, we can add our number to the answer. That should be it for part one. For part two, we have something slightly more complicated. So it turns out we have gears, which are these star symbols, and we need to multiply the numbers surrounding all gears if a gear has two numbers next to it. So for all the gears that have two numbers next to it, its gear ratio is defined as the product of those two numbers, and we just need to add together all of the gear ratios. What I did was just modify a bit of my code for part one. So we had most of the infrastructure set up already. What we're doing in part one is we're going checking all of the numbers and then seeing if there's any symbols next to it. For this one, we need to check all the symbols, or rather all the gear numbers, and then see if there's two numbers next to it. But there's, that's kind of complicated, so there's an easier way to do it because we already have all this infrastructure set up. We know when for every number there's a symbol next to it because we check all of the squares next to it and if they have a symbol, then we know. In that case, we're going to basically just mark it. So inside this is symbol function, we have two inputs, which are i and j, which are the location in the square, and then it returns in part one whether there is a symbol next to it, or whether there is a symbol in that spot. What we can do is sort of hijack into this function and if the symbol is a star, in part one, we're not checking what the symbol is, but if it's a star, then it's a gear. And we know that there is a number next to it because we only call this function when we're at a number and we need to see if there are any symbols next to it. So we're gonna pass an additional parameter to this function uh, defined as num, which is the number that is adjacent to the current symbol. Again, we're only checking symbols if it's next to a number. So if the current symbol is a star, that means it's a gear. And we also know what number is adjacent to it. So we are going to track that. And this is what that goods uh, variable is for. I'm not sure why I named it that. I guess it's just like all the goods numbers that are next to a given um, point in the grid. So this is a n by m grid and it's an empty list initially for every single square in the grid. And we're going to just add numbers to the list for a given 
square if that square contains a uh, gear. So that's what we're going to do. It's sort of like reverse engineering or sort of doing the inverse of our uh, part one problem. So instead of looking at where the gears are and looking at all the numbers next to it, we're going to look at all the numbers. And then for all the gears next to it, we're going to keep a tally of that. Once we're done with that, we can just go through the entire goods variable, and it's going to have a list of all the numbers that are adjacent to every single gear. So we're going to go through all of the cells in the grid. If it's a gear, then this nums variable, which is the uh, numbers that are adjacent to the current square, are going to contain two numbers, hopefully. And we're going to check for that by making sure that the length of that list is two. If there's two numbers next to it, then this gear is good. We multiply the two numbers next to it for the gear ratio, and then add it to our answer. So that's part two. And I think the key part of that is just doing the sort of inverse thing. Instead of going through every gear and keeping track of the numbers, we tally up numbers for every single gear. And that should be it for Advent of Code 2023, day three. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And as always, my code is included in the description. So be sure to check that out. I'll be here tomorrow for day four. Thanks for watching and I'll see you